This activity, uh, SRT C6, Activity 1, is designed uh, for you to kind of work your way through it step by step. So I'm not, I don't want to give all things away, but I'll just kind of lightly touch on each item in case you missed the class or weren't sure what to do. So this is where we introduce, we bridge um, from things about similarity, we did geometric mean, we did special right triangles. Um, this is where we bridge to what's called trigonometry. Um, trig, tri, means triangle. Metry means measure. So this is triangles, measures. Now for a real big and tricky name, it's really quite simple. It's actually um, really the first time we connect the measurement of sides to the size of an angle. Usually we're working in isolation about angle sizes or about lengths of sides. This is where we mix the worlds together, and it's a very powerful, fun, uh, quite easy piece of mathematics. The first thing is I need you to get used to a labeling convention about adjacent, hypotenuse, and opposite sides. Um, the way I help students to remember this is you always are referencing the triangle in terms of the angle that you're working with, the reference angle. So this is the one that's shown, so the reference angle is here. Now I always say to them, the sides that form that reference angle cannot be the opposite side. So the opposite side would be denoted over here then. The adjacent is the one beside the angle, and the hypotenuse is the longest of the three sides, always opposite the right angle. So the clue is the reference angle is always formed between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Opposite is across the triangle. If the reference angle were in the upper corner, for instance, then its uh, sides would be formed by the hypotenuse and the adjacent. Therefore, the opposite is over here. Be aware that the names move around. The opposite isn't always this one, or sometimes it's this one. It is dependent on the reference angle. The second part after you've done labeling will be uh, some ratio finding. The goal of this is that we'll split you up and you'll look at uh, the ratios of the little, the medium, and the large triangles. And you'll look at ratios of sides. Now, you know what to expect. All three of these triangles are similar by AA because they all have right angles and they all share that little angle down there. So what you're going to find, what you're going to expect to find, is that the ratios of sides in all three triangles will match up. Shh, that's what trigonometry is. That there is a constant relationship uh, about the proportional sides, whether you're a tiny one or a big one, proportions will match up. And so what we learn is that um, there are ratios that have three distinct values. And we, we call these three ratios, we give them a name. We have one called the sine ratio, the cosine ratio, and the tangent ratio. Now there's a bit more than that, but for now this is a good start. And we learn that the sine ratio of an angle is comparing the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So whenever you compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse, that ratio has a name and it's called sine. Cosine is a specific angle, uh, a ratio of an adjacent to the hypotenuse. So when you compare an adjacent side to its hypotenuse side, that is known as the cosine ratio. Tangent, then, therefore, is the uh, other comparison of the opposite side to the adjacent side. Now, ultimately, what these three ratios are are the three ways that you can connect these. You can compare each of those sides opposite to hypotenuse, adjacent to hypotenuse, opposite to adjacent. These are just names of three ratios. And the cool thing is, is what you're going to learn, 
is that if you know the angle, those three ratios can be known for that angle. Because no matter how big or how small, as long as it's that angle and a right angle, you will be proportional and those ratios will be locked in. You'll look at some patterns in the table and do some fun things with that, but this is a little bit of an introduction to what trigonometry is.